hello everyone and welcome to my channel if you are new if you're not new welcome back to my channel my name is morena and today i am here to do another one of my monthly book wrap-ups for the month of july so i have like many different books i have some fantasy i have some romance i have some poetry kind of a little more different stuff than i'm usually used to but also not that different at all there's maybe like only one book in this pile that's really different from anything i've ever read but like i said last month since i didn't do anything for pride month in regards to like my reading list i tried to catch up on all the books that i bought at the end of june regarding like gay pride and everything i decided to read those this month to do a little catch up so you guys are gonna see that in here as well it is in total six books i'm gonna talk about it do my ratings and everything and it's just gonna be a great fun little time i honestly feel like july was the longest month ever so excuse me if like some of these books like i'm gonna have a hard time remembering the beginning of june feels like it was a millennia away like it would doesn't even feel like it actually happened sorry if my mind is a little blurred while doing this but i'm gonna try my best to explain the books thoroughly and yada 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 y'all get the picture okay let's go first book i'm gonna be talking about is a Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne Brown. I briefly mentioned reading this book in my mid-year freakout tag thing. I'll have it linked somewhere up here. I mentioned this book briefly and I finally get to talk about it. So this is a fantasy duology. I'm pretty sure it's based off of South African ideologies, mythology. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5. If you guys don't know what this is about, it follows two characters. It is in dual POV. You guys know I'm a sucker for dual POV. It follows Malik and Karina. Karina is the princess of uh, this city that they live in and Malik is just trying to make his way by with his sisters trying to make a life for himself with his family and the only way to do that is to get into the town that Karina is the princess of because that's where all of the people live and where the money is at so while he's there he and his sisters uh meet some spirit that ends up kidnapping one of his sisters and in order to get her back he has to sign up for some trials regarding the kingdom and whoever wins the trials kind of becomes like the king i guess and then once he becomes king he has to kill karina so he's on a mission to kill karina to get back his sister essentially karina on the other hand is on a mission to kill her husband uh to get her mom back because her mom died and she wants to bring her back to life and the only way to do that is whoever becomes the winner of these trials gets to become her husband so she's on a totally different mission they cross paths and it's just it's a lot it's really good i don't know if i explained that thoroughly enough i'm sorry i liked the characters um malik has my whole heart i love him like i genu i think he's one of the sweetest boys ever by the end of the book i was kind of crying for him like he's such a good person through and through and reading in his pov was just so touching because he really loves his sisters and he cares about everyone he's just just a great character i wasn't sure how to feel about karina at first but then i like i remember that she's like she has a lot of stuff to deal with throughout the book once you read in her point of view from the first chapter alone you kind of get a sense of what you're getting into with her character so i gave her the benefit of the doubt and yeah i eventually like started to like her a lot she's really funny um she has like this dry sense of humor that i also have she's great as well the plot was ongoing you don't really get a break once you're in it you're in it like you no breaks and i really like that a lot it felt like the stakes were really high for both characters for Karina and Malik it'll have you very anxious not gonna lie throughout most of the book I was anxious for both characters I didn't want anything bad to happen to them because of everything that they had to go through but it made me continue to read the book and uh, the plot twist I I felt like it was a little predictable which is why I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 instead of a 5 out of 5 but overall the book it's just really good I highly recommend it I think the sequel is coming out in November, either November or October, and I will be reading it. It's a duology, so I'm pretty sure the sequel is the last book. Song Grace and Ruin, 4.5 out of 5. Next book I have is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This was on my June reading list, um, but I didn't have a chance to get to it until July. Sorry about that, but I finally read it. And let me just say, I loved it. This is one of my favorite books, I think. It's a coming of age novel. I gave it a five out of five. It follows the great Michael. Michael, do you see him? He's so 
I love him throughout his life his journey of figuring out who he is his identity not even in regards to his sexuality because he is a gay teen person of color living in London trying to figure himself out but even like in regards to everything else once he gets into college he wants to find himself a little bit more like he's confident in himself but he doesn't really know who he is as a person like he doesn't know the crowd he fits into and once he goes to college he finds out what drag is it's just him discovering himself i don't know how else to put it but it's really it's so good this is my first time reading a book in verse and i really enjoyed it a lot if you guys could recommend me more books that are written in verse please do that because i'm kind of in love with this format of writing i didn't know what i was expecting but it wasn't this it might just be because dean atta is like a fabulous author it's ridiculous but like how fast i got through this i mean Again, it's written in verse, so like it shouldn't take me that long, but I really could not put it down. It was so addicting. Michael is such a great character to read from. All the struggles he went through in his life, the way that he talks about it to other characters in the book and the way he thinks and feels, it's, I don't know, it's just, there's a little bit of familiarity with it, just a tiny bit. It's a very honest piece of writing and I highly recommend it to everyone it kind of word vomited but like there's nothing much to say i'm pretty sure everyone has read this book like this was a big book i think when it first came out it's still pretty new i don't remember the date it's exactly of when it came out but it's still pretty new a lot of people still love it and i understand why i mean hello the, the medal the prize on the front it's it's highly acclaimed so if you haven't read it already you should next book i have is the second book in the brown sister trilogy take a hint danny brown by talia hibbert like i said in my mid-year book freakout tag as well. I really want to get through this series because I am in love with these sisters so much. I love them and I love the books as well. This one, it is a friends with benefits to lovers and I love that so much. That's what, like one of my favorite romance tropes, the friends with benefits to lovers because I, I just love the tension, the longing that you feel from both sides and it's just, it's so good. And what I got from that, from both these characters, um, Sophia and Danny, they're just so perfect for each other. It's just, it's so good and like, okay, I gave this a four out of five, by the way, I don't think I mentioned the rating. I gave this a four out of five. Thought it was very cute funny and wholesome and Danny might be my favorite I don't know I switched between the sisters a lot I don't know which one is my favorite I feel like Danny's my favorite because we think the same like <laughs> throughout most of the book I was like when it comes to like her feeling she's very in denial and uh that's what the book is kind of like centered around Sophia needs help campaigning for his uh little sports team thing and to get more publicity out there he asked Danny to be his fake girlfriend and she does it but uh along with this deal they also agree to sleep with each other and uh from the beginning of the book you already know that like they kind of there's like there's something there so as you guys know how these tropes go they end up falling for each other a lot of more in-depthness when it comes to the characters. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you've read the book, you already know where I'm getting. I thought Severe would have been this two-dimensional hunk, like <laughs> this big hunk that like used to be like a sports guy and now he's like coaching a team. I don't know, I don't know what I expected, but he wasn't what I expected and it made me love him even more. I love Severe, what probably one of my favorite book boyfriends. Danny, again, that's my girl, that's my girl. We th we think on the same wavelength kind of. It's actually Actually very scary which is why I couldn't fault her for half of the stuff that she did throughout this book because there are some points in this book where I was like Danny why are you doing that and then I was like I completely understand why you're doing that she's all about like protecting herself and her feelings she doesn't really open up that much to people like when it comes to like romance and Severe stops it like he's all about happy endings and wanting that person to share his life with and wanting to be happy with that person so it's just it's very interesting and of course it's a dual POV the first book in this series following Chloe um was also dual POV I'm sure the third book is also dual POV so if that's not your thing sorry but to see how they both think so differently but yet they fit so well together it was just it was just so satisfying to me. The reason I didn't give this a 5 out of 5, kind of the same reason why I didn't give the first book a 5 out of 5, is because of the conflict near the end. I feel like this is a pattern I'm gonna see also in the third book. 
and I, I know a lot of romance books do this, the like little conflict near the end of the book that happens in the last 100 pages that needs to also be resolved in the last 100 pages. Very unnecessary and I didn't like it at all. It felt so forced. Like it felt really out of nowhere. Things were going great and then all of a sudden they just weren't and it would it flipped so quickly. It gave me whiplash, I kid you not. I wasn't prepared for it and I didn't like that it was in there but overall I liked the book. <laughs> Both characters were being stupid and it just made me very irritated but it, it all worked out in the end. I like the second book a lot. I'm gonna get the third book probably soon like i'm not gonna put a date on it but soon definitely next book that i have read in july is an ember in the ashes by saba Zahir. now this isn't a surprise if you guys already saw my reading vlog for this so if you also saw that reading vlog i already gave all my opinions kind of on the characters the plot and everything i'm not gonna go too in depth with it because i already did that in the reading vlog they gave this a five out of five i really enjoyed this a lot if you guys don't know what this book is it's a kind of fantasy dystopian ish centered around a uh, liar and Elias. The plot is kind of a lot. I don't know how to summarize. <laughs> Basically, Laia is on a mission to get her brother back and in order to do that she needs the help of the resistance in her town. The, the resistance goes against everything that the government is about and but in order to do that she has to also break into the academy, work under the chief of the academy as a slave or whatever. But the chief of the academy is Elias's mother and Elias has his own plans. He does not like the academy at all. He wanted to, he wants to break out of it, but he gets put under trials to become the next emperor of the city. And it's, it's a lot. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect going on it because I, although I've heard a lot about this series, I had no idea what the premise was. As I said in my reading vlog, uh, I really enjoyed it and it might be one of my new favorite series i don't know the first book was really good i don't know what i expected but it was really really good and i've heard mixed things about the following books because like i said this is a series i think there are like three more books i've heard mixed reviews on those but everyone kind of agrees that the first book is kind of great so yeah i'm gonna read the rest of the series because i like this a lot i like Elias as a character. He was kind of like the tough guy but a sweetheart on the inside and those fictional men make me swoon so obviously yeah. I liked Laia. I like her growth in the book a lot. By the end of the book it's like a completely different character. Like her character development is top tier. The whole world itself was really nice. I like how it wasn't that complicated because <laughs> I was really out of it during the time I was reading this book so I was not in the mood to read like a bunch of like complicated government rules you know the hierarchies and everything like I was not in the mood I liked how kind of simple but also somewhat complex this world was I don't know I don't know how to describe it if you read the book then you already know very great I enjoyed it Saba to hear you you did the thing you did a great job she already knows this I don't know why I'm saying this like she doesn't already know <laughs> it's a highly acclaimed series of course she already knows next book I have is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers yes I finally read it I know another one of the books that I was supposed to read last month but did not so here we are I thoroughly enjoyed this book I gave it a four out of five fiction contemporary coming of age sapphic romance everyone says that this was this is like a really good book and you know since it's centered around a black woman uh who is also queer I was like why not just give it a chance just give it a chance and I was not really disappointed if you guys don't know what honey girl is about it is about Grace Porter the girl on the cover who is trying to just figure out her life <laughs> um she just got her PhD doesn't really know what she wants to do so she goes to Vegas gets drunkenly married to a girl in Vegas and after that it's kind of, kind of a spiral because she's always had her life together and I think that was kind of the breaking point where she was like oh crap I don't have anything together this is all a lie my whole life has been a lie it's just her trying to figure herself out not even just with her marriage that she has now but with her family her friends what she wants to do with like job wise because now that she has this whole degree this doctorate she doesn't she has no idea what she wants to do and I personally feel like this was really good I think that after a certain point though I did get bored I'm not gonna say what point exactly made me 
kind of eh. but there was a climax in the book where everything was like tumbling down even more like grace was kind of self-sabotaging and i felt i saw a little of myself in that <laughs> a grace in general i feel like i see me in like a little too much but when she did that i kind of like pushed away because i was like that's something i don't i don't I felt like I was looking in a mirror and it made me kind of back off. I had to stop reading the book after a few days because I was like, I need a break. It made me see things in myself that I didn't want. Not that I have a PhD, obviously I'm 18. It's very real. The, the novel, the story, it's very real even though it's fiction, you know? So I wasn't ready for that at all. All of Grace's thoughts and every- I feel like everyone can relate to her as a character but for me, personally the relations i felt with her and made me stand offish because it's it's these are thoughts that i try not to think about too much but i feel like everyone especially black women queer or not we have these thoughts sometimes and it's it gets it gets to be overwhelming and that's what i felt i felt a little overwhelmed but overall i did like the story a lot i liked the romance i liked yuki yuki is her wife i liked her friends um both grace and her friends i thought they were really good together everything about it was just so good i liked grace as a main character like i know I, it doesn't i don't show it but i did like her as a main character so much yeah that's any girl four out of five next we have the last book which is cinderella is dead by kaylin bray bayron 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 bay bay kaylin bayron two hours later kaylin bayron i finally read it i actually finished this book today so it will technically be considered in my august wrap up but I started in July, but I'm gonna keep it in here, okay? Young adult fantasy sapphic romance. I did not even know it was since around like a sapphic romance. I went in kind of knowing nothing. I knew some of the premise, but not that. So I was like, oh my God, yes, yes. I read this right after Honey Girl. So I was like, let's do this again. I gave it a 3.5 out of five though. Uh, if you guys don't know what this book is about, it is centered around Sophia. Sophia lives in a society where the Cinderella fairy tale that we all know is real. And uh, Cinderella has been dead for 200 years, but after she got found by this prince and lived a happily ever after tale, whatever, and Sophia's town lives in a society where females, women are forced to go to the ball and like have men basically auction for them in a sense like even if they don't want to be married men have to take the woman forcibly and because of this Sophia is like no I don't want to I don't want to live like this because she doesn't like men she likes women obviously but also because she feels like the women in the society are treated like trash so she's like I'm not doing this and she runs off ends up finding many different um versions of the cinderella story that are different from the ones that kings have told over time it's very twisted and through those different tales she figures out a way to take down the king who has been setting these rules and yeah i gave this 3.5 out of 5 but i enjoyed the premise but when it came to the actual book i was kind of bored i enjoyed sophia i loved constance i loved everything but the book was just not doing it like it took me nearly a week to finish this it's only like around 300 pages it should not have taken me a week to finish this you know i feel like it was just it just wasn't hitting the way i thought it was it just took very long for the book to actually start and then once the plot actually got moving there was a point in the book where it was just stagnant like it just it, it didn't go anywhere for at least 100 pages to me personally it felt like that it just wasn't it for me i enjoyed the characters i liked the romance constance and sophia ultimate ship i was not expecting the plot twist though the plot twist with one of the characters yeah i was not expecting that at all my jaw was on the floor i was like like the plot twists in this book are gonna have you in a chokehold that's what kept me reading kind of because i was like what because the different things that you find out about the classic cinderella tale and how kaylin the author twists it for this story amazing like wow overall i liked it it was well done but it just didn't hit the way i felt it should have Maybe it's because my expectations are too high. I don't know. I've only heard good things about this book. So I was expecting for it to be, and it just wasn't that for me. And yeah, that's it. That's my July wrap up. If you enjoyed this, thanks. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, here it is. Um, I mainly interact on Twitter, but if you'd like to follow me on my other social medias, they will be linked in the description below. 
recommend me more books because now we're in the month of august and school is about to start so once school starts back up i don't know if i'll still have time to read so recommend me books and i'll probably get to them as fast as i can throughout the month of august bye everyone